I have two books that I was going to read from, but I think I'm going to chicken out and I can't read a poem for Jim Denemy, but I want to think about him. Um, this work, as well as all the books since my third book, have covers from Andrea Carlson, and she loaned me her work for the interiors of the books as well. So um, those artists are often um, part of what I do in my work. I'm going to read quickly so that you all can go do the things you need to do. And I'm just going to give you a little frame uh, at the end on a poem that I have made out of the words that I've heard in the past night and day. But this one is from Little Big Bully, and if you saw the images from Andrew Carlson's work, you might recognize the cover. It uh, is a version of um, something uh, like Red Exit that is a print. I'm going to read a poem called Stone Animate. All my poems are super short, so don't get nervous. <laughs> Whether creation carved them or not, my hands are some concretion, some ton of rock washed over and over in surf until sand encases the glow of quartz. Hardness thrust up through Earth's crust to tumble a hundred million years, and here we reach each other. I reach out with hands that match this skipping stone, and I think a moment. We know each other, and though for the purpose of, purposes of art I should, I will not let you go. And I kept adjusting what I wanted to read according to what people had to say, and I heard so many discussions talks and discussions and of the future and everybody touching on the future, which was so beautiful to me. And this is called The Eighth Fire. We talk about the seventh generation, but we're responsible beyond that. The Eighth Fire. Deepest skies, when finally we arrive, dark as fire mark on rock, no scorched scent, but cold as when we prod the ash, we wish for coals. Dark, into which swirls the million stars obscured these many years. Spiral knowledge unfurls or funnels us while white rocks reveal years before the years before the years. We speak in verbs, active as water. Dark water, the well of what we know, what we always knew. Talk, waters talk. Unseen, we walk a dark path carried along a spiral. We go forward when we're back. So I'm going to share with you to end the poem I wrote out of my listening. I started to write out of my listening. It has to do with um, a name in my family, Nenaogijigokwe which means the woman who ordered the cosmos or who keeps track of the stars or who cares for the stars. And I thought, she sounds like a map maker. And she also sounds like a curator. So for Jean and for all of you. I'm not going to call her Nana Ogijikokwe in the poem, though. I'm just going to call her Sky Woman. Sky Woman stared for so long at the blank walls of her world that she opened a space, blue swirls in white, a green hump in there somewhere, turning and turning. She stared for 24 hours, then it started over again. She called this time-based art. Then Sky Woman felt a radical urge to jump. And then here, Sky Woman felt another urge. She called it creative. Her body agreed. Soon enough, her first work birthed because it had an audio track. She called it mixed media. <laughs> Spirits heard it calling and came. They critiqued, but they wanted to collaborate. 
with her and soon more births, it became a series, the creative series. After that, the gallery was invented. She called it Earth, Earth Gallery. It wasn't too big, but it would do. After that, she created and created and created all of this, all of us. And still, she goes on creating until not the end, until another beginning, until the next beginning, she thinks. If she keeps doing this, she'll have to find some funding. So, <laughs> thank you.